Let's demold another one. I already took the pin out. You see with injection molding they would have uh, ejection pins. That's why those molds cost thousands of dollars. I mean maybe a hundred thousand dollars for a mold that would do something like this. A little bit of Looks like a good one. Looks like a good run. Remember the Marty Robbins song? It looks like a good one. I think that it could run. I think that was El Paso. This is number 9 or 10 and uh, I'm fairly low of uh, lead in the pot. I don't intend to put any more in. This is it, the last one. Just as I'm getting good at it, I'm quitting. I never did have to use the copper block, so the heat never built up that much, and I think it's because uh, my propane tank is running low. And the level of lead It's about like that. Of course, I got plenty more in the uh, yellow container there. Now, I'm going to lay these out here in a second, but remember, I'm 70 years old. More than likely, this is a lifetime supply for me. Shop Dog Sam, settle down in the front row there, will you please? I just let the balance of the lead solidify in the iron pot. I've never had a problem with it uh, cracking. Uh, the problem would be when you put it away for a year and then you restart it that the lead may expand but it doesn't seem to do that but it, since there's no top on it the expansion can be upward but I don't leave the ladle in there again this is a bottom pour ladle so you notice that I didn't really have to uh, scrape the dross each time because the, the metal that's going into the mold basically coming off the bottom of the ladle Pretty slick. Well, I got 11 good ones in all, and I think I had what, three, four, five, even the bad ones that I immediately melted down, and that's what they look like. Now, sometimes there's a few little irregularities there. I don't worry about that. If this was forced into the mold under pressure, I wouldn't have that. Plus, the sharp corners are always a problem in a mold. That'll be cut off, remelted at some time. Ream the hole. I think I'm going to go through and show all of the finishing operations on this also. So this will be one heck of a long video. Now why do I make these out of lead instead of aluminum? Because I want the weight, the inertia. And remember when we got spoked uh, wheels, most of the weight is out on the rim, which is where it needs to be, not necessarily near the middle. Are these delicate? Yes. If I put it in a three-jaw truck, could I crush it? Yes but I don't intend to. Now one thing that I've consistently had a problem with that I just talked about a few minutes ago is there's always a little sink, sink hole here or sink spot right here. It'd be, always be on the top because of gravity. Now that isn't really a bother to me. What I do is that that's the point, it's kind of a flat spot at which I drill and tap my set screw. I've got the gas turned off on the bottle too and I will let everything cool off overnight so then when I put it away tomorrow it's uh, there's no chance of me burning myself and the amazing thing is I didn't even burn myself one tiny bit uh, today uh, and, and I guess that's just to experience where I've used gallons and gallons of ungentine in my life and eventually you reach a point in your life and when you're teaching welding also where you always you know you do that before you pick something up. That's almost a reflex sometimes. Even when I pick up an ice cube sometimes, I'm there, oh, oh, I hope it's not hot. I'll meet you in the basement. Well, how about it? From this raw material 
to this. Now I know what you're thinking. I thought he said he was going to use some lamp black. This is the bigger one. And uh, you know, I didn't have any trouble getting it apart and I wasn't in the mood for stopping and putting the lamp black on, so I, I got along pretty well without it. You can see the difference in the two uh, molds. Bandsaw or hand hacksaw doesn't make any difference, only takes a few strokes. At some time I will remelt that sprue. Real soft. Well, it's hard lead, but it's still easy to saw. Now I will take it to the belt sander here and just feather that in. That way when I put it on the lathe, the tool won't come around and catch on that and cause the work to slip on the mandrel. I've got a bunch of videos, you know, I like these toy steam engines. Uh, I'm with my grandson, Tubal Kane Jr., but uh, I'm really disappointed with the viewership. It's just like out of a, a, a billion people in the world, why is it that only 3,000 watch my videos on steam engines? That's how minimal the interest uh, in that is. But uh, besides lamenting that, today earlier I was on uh, YouTube and I was watching, this is a Jensen company, Jeanette, Pennsylvania, and they were showing how these are made. It's really neat. It showed how they put the bricks on here and roll the bricks and make the chimneys and all kinds of neat stuff. Assemble some of this. And then the man said, I, I'm thinking, I can't wait till I see how they make those flywheels. So all of a sudden the man picks up some flywheels and he says, we just got a batch of these from the foundry and now I'm getting ready to drill them and assemble them. So, oh, that's what I wanted to see the most. Well, as easy as that was in the, uh, the bench vise for the hand hacksaw, it was easier this way. I think I'll finish off the batch this way. I'm going to drill the set screw hole now. This little palm grin tilt device is set at 10 degrees, and I've center punched the hole on that little flat spot, uh, that shrinkage spot. And that's the number 38 drill, which is the tap drill size for 540. Remember, number 5 is an eighth of an inch. A size that I favor, but uh, it's about extinct, I think. I'll drill that off camera. If you ask for a number 540 tap or set screw at your local hardware store, the teenage girl will promptly, promptly ask you to leave the premises. And when you tap this, it's kind of gummy, so you've got to keep clearing the, the chip. It's such a soft material. I'm getting ready to ream that center hole, 3 sixteenths. I don't need to drill it. The reaming is going to do it. You recall seeing this. But actually, you didn't see this one. This is a, a new one that I made. I like my handy reamers, you know, in a carrier here. So I can take it around to whatever machine I'm working on. But I uh, put an extra row in there so I have my... Uh, machine reamers, my chucking reamers in the front, and then the appropriate size or the same size hand reamer on the back. So that's going to save me a lot of time. Now in reaming these, remember the hub is thicker than the rim, so I just put the hub right into the hole there. And I don't even need any fluid or, or cutting oil on this. See, I'm just taking a little out. It, getting rid of the taper. That's all I'm doing. A perfectly reamed hole. Thank you. Lately on these flywheels, instead of using a set screw, a 540 set screw, I'm using a 540 cap screw. The reason for that is that the cap screw allows you to use a much larger Allen wrench than for the set screw. You know, the smaller the Allen wrench, the more likely it is to round out the hex hole. Have you noticed that? Now what I'm going to do next, before I turn these down, I'm going to paint a few of them red, and then I will machine them, and that will take the red paint off of the uh, 
the areas that are going to be machined and the spokes will still be red. So I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to go to bed. Good morning. It's a new day at 7.30 in the morning and uh, last night before I went to bed I did paint these. Uh, took them outside and painted them red and uh, I have machined uh, just one and that's what they look like when they're done. Now don't uh, turn this off yet. I'm not quite done because I'm going to go over to the lathe and talk a little bit about turning lead on the lathe and at the very end I'm going to uh, turn the periphery of one with uh, vertical shear tool. Now I'm not going to talk much about that but there is some interest in that and I will have a later video on vertical shear tools for the lathe for difficult to machine materials. As soft as lead is, it is sometimes difficult to get a good finish. So the tool that I ground is extremely keen. And then I still sometimes get a little bit of a chatter. This one turned out pretty good out there, but a little bit of a chatter. And uh, I think some of it, as light as the cut is, the spokes are actually flexing a little bit on this. So I've tried different speeds and feeds and tools and so on and just try to get the best finish I can get. Uh, it, is, it is not really that critical. Notice how nice it is when you paint them first and then machine them. You don't have to worry about masking and you get a real clean line. So let's step over to the Atlas Craftsman lathe and uh, I'm going to machine one of these. Although they are usable perfectly usable. I didn't paint the rim much, but they would be usable now with the hole that's been reamed and a set screw and a set screw in there. But I like the looks better when they're machined. There's my freshly ground tool. Notice how keen it is with very sharp angles. I'm using power feed and I find that I get a little bit better finish feeding in toward the center of the lathe than what I do feeding out. I'm using power feed and I'm feeding uh, away from me. I find that I get a little bit better finish feeding away from me than toward me. It'll take a couple passes to clean this up. And then a very light pass on the final finishing cut. This is the second side. I've flipped the work over and I'm just about on my final pass on the second side and next I will do the periphery. I've got both sides faced and this is my second pass across the periphery using the same tool. I did crank the uh, spindle speed up one step on the V-pulley. The chips are very soft and supple. You couldn't cut yourself on one if you tried. This is my finishing pass with the regular tool and I stopped it and looked at it. I am getting quite a good finish, better than I thought I would. Although I'm still going to go ahead and use that uh, vertical shear tool just to show it and uh, it is not necessary but I have found it necessary other times and you know the alloy of the lead that I'm using sure can vary too depending on what I throw in the pot and that may or may not make a difference I really do not, do not know. Nope, the chips are catching. The surface finish actually is quite satisfactory. 
but I am going to run a, a cut or two using this vertical shear tool. I haven't talked about those. I will later on. And I'm just going to take a cut, but I'm making no mention of really how it's working or, or uh, any of that. But it is a good tool for stainless steel and other hard to machine or difficult to machine materials. It is a finishing tool. Only meant to take one to two thousandths off per pass. It is not for roughing. You need to take it down to the final size with a regular tool and then finish with this. So I'm going to put the Cirola tool holder in and uh, tool post in and see what we come up with. Here's the vertical shear tool at work. I'm not sure how well this shows up. But it's a shearing action. I'll show you what the chips look like there in a second. Quite a different shape than with the other tool. These are the chips with the vertical shear tool, whereas these are the chips more like steel wool, lead wool. You know, they make lead wool. These plumbers used to use it. There's quite a difference. Here's the one that I just finished and the surface finish is quite good. Of course the uh, very silvery color will quickly turn to a dull gray with lead. But I don't care. So I finished two of them and I got another one to go and that's all I'm going to do at this time. Uh, I have another seven or eight in stock and I will paint those the color I want and machine those on demand. Now looking at this little uh, Sterling engine here which I did not make I much prefer the looks of the spoked flywheel over the disc but it would be so much cheaper to make the mold for this. Strictly a lathe project I think or a boring project Okay, I hope you like this little uh, video. It's a two-parter on casting flywheels and then machining them for my small engines. Keep watching my videos and thanks for the good comments. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.